This is the shed that's attached to the barn. It's in good shape now. Uh, maybe two years ago, I did a lot of work to it. I had to replace basically the bottom of the shed. Like a lot of sheds, the water falls down, bounces into the wooden siding, and rots the shed out from the ground up. So I cut all of the rotten material out, replaced it, replaced the siding, and I also added this two foot overhang by making these simple brackets. So now I've got a great place to organize all of my tools and that's what I'm gonna start doing today. I'll get started on this project by moving the tools out of the way and then blowing the area out with the leaf blower. Before I start organizing the tools, I'm adding a little more three quarter inch bluestone to the platform I built at the base of the shed. Under the bluestone is chicken wire that I attached to the foundation. The combination of the two do a great job keeping animals from digging underneath the shed. To finish this space off, I'm capping the treated wood frame with composite decking that was left over from another project. With the last piece of decking attached, I'll wrap up the string line and get to work on organizing the tools. I picked up these heavy duty metal brackets at the recycling center and I can use them to store the grass catcher for my lawnmower. I'll paint them the same color as the barn after I finish hanging the tools. This is the slicer I pull behind my lawnmower when I'm overseeding the lawn and I'll just set this on the ground next to the wall and it will be out of the rain. My friend Andy owns a hardware store and I was explaining the project to him and looking for little hangers for the tools that I'm using and he said well why don't you just use what we use and it's kind of a multi-tool hanging bracket and all I need to do to modify is just grind these little clips off the back, drill another hole and I'll screw this right into the siding, making sure that there's a stud on the other side. Support for this episode is provided by Stable. I use Stable in all my gas powered equipment. For engines with longer storage periods, like a generator, classic car, or motorcycle, use Stable Storage. To learn more about the benefits of using Stable Fuel Stabilizer, click on the link in the description below. I also picked up a few of these smaller brackets for individual tools and the combination of the two work well together.
Okay, well definitely nice to have this project finished. Like I said, I've been working on this now for about two years, just a little bit here and there. And it's gonna be great to be able to drive the four-wheeler up, load it up with tools, and when I finish a project, put all the tools right back where they belong. I'm sure you notice that the four-wheeler's a little bit on an angle now. And yeah, that might be a little bit dangerous, but I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, probably in the near future, we'll be kind of leveling this area out off to bring some more material in. Uh, big thank you to my sponsor, Stable. I only work with brands that I use and products I will endorse. And I've been using Stable for probably 30 years. I use the Stable 360 in all of my small engines and things like my generator I use the stable storage because my, sp my small engines I generally will use every couple of weeks at the at least and the generator I might not use for a couple months or even a year so I want to make sure that the gas doesn't go bad also a quick shout out to Corona Tools I'm just starting to work with Corona Tools uh, basically what I do is I look for a tool that I really like or a product and then I approach them and see if they'll work with me and kind of getting started with Corona Tools is just to get some of their products and uh, use them in some projects. And we'll see where it goes from there. But with three sons and a big yard, I've always got a lot of projects to do, so I need a lot of tools. Uh, one more thing I'm gonna mention about this shed in case you're ever gonna build one or, or put new siding on yours. Uh, the aluminum, if you noticed it on this platform here, that goes down and covers the entire 2x8 treated wood foundation and then it comes up the wall about 8 inches and that's there to keep any mice and things like that out from getting into the building. Uh, so that creates a very good barrier and it also is a good protector of moisture. So even though the soffit's way out here or the, the water dripping way out here, any moisture that might get behind this siding is going to hit the aluminum before it hits the 2x4 studs. So taking a little extra precaution this time uh, and trying to make sure that this shed lasts a long time. So that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Before you start your next project, click on the link in the description for my professional woodworking plans and build a piece of furniture that will last a lifetime.